Today with Above the Parapet, we're very privileged to have Eleanor Kaplan, a former minister in the Canadian government who served in three levels in, the, in, in government in Canada, retiring in 2004. So Eleanor, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it was a real privilege to speak to you earlier. Uh, you talked a lot about your journey into the very senior levels of public life, and it sounded like along the way there were quite a few challenges that you had faced. Um, I think a lot of people would be interested to know what did you call upon to give you resilience during those times of, of challenge? Well, uh, when I was first elected uh, to the Municipal Council in 1978, there were very few uh, women in elected office and it was a very male environment. One of the things that happened, I always felt, was that because I was a strong woman, mm -hmm. now in a position of perceived power, uh, I was seen as a threat. Mm -hmm. So um, being aware of that uh, was very helpful. But if anything, what it did was steal my determination right. to um, ensure that I could serve my constituents. And I have always uh, told everyone that my guiding value and principle was to make my children proud of me. About now, the global statistics are about 20 to 22 percent of parliamentarians and people in politics are, are women. And that was very much the case when, when you entered yes. and when you were a minister. How did you find it to operate in, in such a male-dominated field? It was a challenge, mm. um, and particularly because there was a culture. Mm. Um, when I was first elected, uh, in the Alderman's Lounge, we were called Alderman, it's now councillor, but in those days it was aldermen, right. um, there was smoking permitted and mm. cigar smoking permitted. And um, the other thing was that at every uh, break they would bring in uh, donuts okay. or muffins okay. that were very high calorie. Right. And so we discovered that you know we were gaining weight. Yes, okay. And so we asked could we have a no spo smoking environment, mm -hmm. and uh, could we have some healthier foods mm -hmm. like um, crudities, carrots, and celery, and that kind of thing? Um, and they accommodated that. Mm -hmm. um, as more women got elected and we had a critical mass, that changed the culture of the whole provincial uh, parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I got to Ottawa, I was elected in 1997. And uh, the Prime Minister that year nominated uh, and appointed five women in five ridings. He mm. was determined to have women. So I was one of the privileged to have received an appointment from the Prime Minister to the riding of Thornhill. And um, people were very curious about all of that. Mm -hmm. Like, why would the Prime Minister do that? Right. And it gave me and others an opportunity to talk about the importance of gender balance yes. in decision making. Um, you were in three levels of government and yes. you progressed steadily from, from working in local muni municipal government yes. to becoming minister and covering various portfolios. How did you balance your, your personal life um, alongside these, these senior roles? Well, I don't think I did it very well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have four children and uh, a long suffering wonderful husband. We've been married 50 years. Okay. Uh, they always came out and helped in the campaign. Um, they always were willing to listen to me, although at some points they would say, couldn't we talk about something else? Okay. Um, and they were, they were excellent and always supportive. Um, but one of the reasons that I retired in 2004 was that I wanted to spend more time with my husband, mm. with my children, and particularly my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. um, and I had been in elected office at that point for 25 years. So I felt it was time for the next generation. Sure, absolutely. Um, and talking of the next generation, um, I'd be really interested to know, and I'm sure there are lots of other younger women who'd like to go into politics, who'd really like to learn from your perspective, what kind of key lessons would you like the women that come after you? What, what, what should they learn from your experience? Well, I'll start with the bottom line first. You have to prepare. You can't just do it. Uh, you have to prepare by learning as much about it as you can so that if somebody asks you a question, you've got a good answer. Right. That's the first. 
The second is in the just do it category, you really do need uh, to make a list of all your friends and family mm -hmm. and everyone that you think would be helpful and supportive. And even if they're not friends, acquaintances, people that you've met who, if you phone them and say, I'm thinking about doing this, they won't hang up the phone and they would say something like, good for you. And when they say good for you, you're able to say to them, so I'm going to need some help. Do you think you could give me a little time, advice and so forth? And what I found was at the council meetings or at um, uh, sessions of parliament, uh, both provincial and federal, um, people were always interested in the speeches I was going to make. Public life, yes, it's a fishbowl, but it is about public service. Mm -hmm. And if you recognize it's about public service, your obligation is to understand what your constituents are, what is in their best interest. They may not always agree, and usually on controversial issues, they split down the middle. So there's no real um, consensus. And that's why you have an obligation to do the best that you can to explain it to them. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, when they phone you, or someone phones you, to yell at you because you didn't vote the way they thought you should, that you've got a good answer for them as to why you did. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's really the advice I would give. Bottom line, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for this. This has been great. And um, it's going to be really, uh, really significant to have your voice contribute to our research and, um, and to pass on your, your lessons and findings. Thank you very much, no, Jane. Thank good you. luck. Okay, thank you.